Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I'm with two special guests. Well, the the one right to my right left, not He's my not left. He's not that special. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> my left is my poppy, Pastor Craig Roders. Hey. Woo! He hasn't been here in a while, so Woo. it's good to have him back. And then the one and only Ashley Sanchez. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, Ashley, um, well, we'll get into we How are do we, we fix my dad. Well, yeah, okay. she's a she's a counselor, so that's what this will be a free counseling session yeah. that you guys get to listen in on. I'm kidding, but before we get started, we will pray. So I will pray to start and we can begin. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for this day. Thank you that this is the day that you have made that we'll mm-hmm. rejoice and be glad in it. And thank you that. Um, even though there's all the craziness going on around us, God, and that the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy and bring us down, that we can fix our eyes on you, uh, that you are the Prince of Peace, and we just uh, even want to focus right now on the spiritual aspect of things that even though we sometimes just feel like we're in this alone, that this is a spiritual battle, and the things that we wrestle against are not flesh and blood, but principalities. So we just pray. Uh, we just speak peace, be still. Mm. Pray against mm. any lies, any discouragement, any demonic spirits. They'll be whispering things that are not of you, that they'll be silenced in Jesus' name. Mm. We just speak the blood of Jesus over this podcast. Everything we say will be honoring to you, God, that your presence mm. will just fill this room, yes, that Lord. we will not be able to say anything more or anything less, God, that uh, you will just bridle our tongues. I pray that you will help us to really focus on what you're speaking to us and where you want us to go with this podcast as this is a conversation and um, it's easy to just go with uh, how we feel, but we want to be spirit led. So fill us right now. We love you, God. We're excited to see what you're going to do. And we just pray if anyone's out there just uh, grieving or experiencing loss of a loved one or uh, anyone that they know, God, that you will just comfort them. That you will just wrap them in your arms and just fill them with your love. And we know you can do it. So we just ask for this and believe for this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Alrighty. So, Ashley, do you want to maybe just share your credentials? (laughs) Sure. And yeah. I'm so one here. smart lady. Yeah. <laughs> I am one Don't smart worry. lady. I will. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. And humble. <laughs> Never that. Just kidding. <laughs> Lord, Fair humble enough. me, yeah. Jesus, oh, please. Yeah. But my you name is. You hang out with David and you feel really good about yourself. Bendito. So my name is Ashley Sanchez. I am a. Um, mental health counselor by trade. I graduated from University of Arizona in 2019 with my master's degree. Um, I currently work in the capacity of a school counselor, but um, for the first two and a half years of my career, I worked at a community mental health agency, Mm -hmm. you know, working with a lot of different cases. Um, But this is a field that the Lord really brought me in. I'm very Mm -hmm. excited to be here. Amen. And this is going along with our relationship series. And you might be like, this is weird. This is a weird podcast to go along with that. But in love, you also can experience loss. Um, But a lot of times we just think of the happy honeymoon phase and excitement and all the sparks. Yeah, because I'm about to get married. But also there's a lot. There's loss. I've heard stories of people like on their honeymoon and then their spouse like passes away. And it's like wow, okay, that really just killed the mood of everything. <laughs> but literally, that's well, <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, but it's it's it happens. And you're like, why God? Why me? Like, this doesn't make sense. I want to experience all this. Um, I even think of Jeremy Camp as a perfect example. Like, his wife passed away soon after they were um, married. And so we um are going to be talking about that today and so my dad and I will just be answering any of Ashley's questions for us my mom passed away uh June 9th and so is that eight months ago I don't know but seven eight I don't know but it 
yeah, it feels like it was just yesterday, but also it's getting to a point for us where we're starting to realize like, okay, this is real. Like dealing now with like the insurance and them trying to like have us pay for all this stuff and all this stuff with uh, celebration of life and then uh, just everything and all the different stages of grief. But I think now I remember it hitting New Year's like three, two, one, happy New Year. And I remember even just in that moment, like it hit me. I was like, this is a new year without mm. mom. You know, like this yeah. is the year without mom here yeah. in person. So I'm talking too much. But anyway, <laughs> Ashley, anything? <laughs> no, it's yeah. good. I, I like that you were kind of telling it from your point of view because it really is going to be a new year for you guys, right? Yeah. Like we're already in February yeah. and and like I think last year was a lot of the ups and downs where it's like we're hoping that we're pulling through, we're believing mm -hmm. for healing, but then we're coming to this to this point of like, okay, this is like the mm -hmm. end. But before we start, I think I do want to bring up like the stages of grief, right? And the stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance, right? And grief and loss really is a spectrum. So we kind of flow through each stage differently. And so I think what where I would like to start is, is Pastor Craig, mm. is when when did you finally come to accept that Teresa was you're like, OK, I can accept that this is going to happen and not fall into the depression or did you? So what was your process like? Can I like? say one thing before, like how she passed away and what she passed? Some people don't know mm. who Mama mm. Teresa is. And so do you want to share that? Or you want me? Uh, so in 2016 or the end of 2016 my mom was diagnosed with um breast cancer and so she went the route of you know she the lumpectomy and they took out the thing and she felt from the lord not to do chemo which a lot of people got upset with her at um, but she really felt from the Lord not but, to but do it was, that. It was guessing but, it was radical. I mean, they wanted double mastectomy, yeah. chemo, and radiation so bad that most people and go they through said it. if said you they'd don't, you die. Won't. they yeah. would have mm. rather just they said yeah. it felt like you died. And they said if you don't, like you won't see your children in six months, you'll be mm. dead. But she felt from the Lord, if I do this, I won't be here in six mm. months. Like she felt like it was like an obedience thing, mm. but also she knew other people who had done chemo and that and passed away mm. within six months. So she did went that route and she was healed. Like God healed her. Wow. And for five years or what was that? Um, nine, one. Yeah. Like for five years, she was cancer free and they were yeah. able to say that. And they had like tumor markers and everything. And they couldn't find anything. Like, she also yeah. was crazy healthy. That's one thing. It's like, yeah. just because you're healthy doesn't mean you can't get cancer and oh, pass yeah. away. Um, so, well, anyway, but, but she... the reason I'm healthy is because I have so many preservatives. That's why cancer can't... <laughs> yeah, it's like a McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's how it works. Uh, you got to reverse it. Yeah, but... So. And so, uh, then 2021 is when... I think at the end is when we found out it came back. And after that, they said you have six months Well, it was weird because it didn't show up in the blood work. Nothing, yeah. But they yeah. said, wait, something's not right here. I don't know what. Yeah. Well, she found out because so her, cat the incision yeah, yeah. Open, that where they it. did yeah, yeah. the uh, um the lumpectomy mm -hmm. under the armpit and took out the lymph nodes was opening. Yeah, open. And Ooh. so that's where the like sign of cancer, yeah, you know, and it, so funky. it was opening and then there was a, she felt a tumor and a lump like that was growing in her breast. And so that's when she went in and they're like, and so they did like the MRIs and all those things. And they're like, it's all over your body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I that's a stage four board. metastasized cancer. And they said, you'll be gone in six months. But then after that, she was here for another year and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would have been, yeah. well, no, so awesome. another 2021 six months i guess it was six months the yeah. end of 21 so but that's when she started getting really weak and all that and so we knew it was like yeah. that's when we started realizing like this is yeah to answer your question because like she had a coughing spell yeah. remember not like a christmas uh and a half i guess two christmas ago yeah. and so i thought oh this is it like, yeah she's when not, bear was I passing said, away i said we're not going to get a dog because i didn't need a puppy yeah. going through this yeah, and she that. said no get it for trend you know and mm. uh she uh, lived a year because I thought yeah. this, she coughed so hard. She literally said, yeah, this is it. And then so we prayed and she did. She was another year, a little, mm -hmm. well, a year and a half. Year and That's half. what I was thinking. Yeah. And I was just half, like, wow. I mean, so, so, so it was so up and down that yeah, there was yeah. no, 
it was like you kind of knew, kind of didn't, kind of knew. And I'm kind of funky with death anyway because my mom died when I was six. So I kind of, and I had a rough home life, so I had detachment disorder. So I had like really weird concepts of death. I thought some Mm -hmm. aliens took my mom because they they didn't tell me for like a year. So I was, yeah, so so Mm -hmm. it's like a soap opera. So I had, I thought my mom was like going to come and say, Hey, I was just kind of away for a while. On a spaceship. <laughs> so, yeah. Just, I, <laughs> I was away Christian, on a spaceship. So I didn't know anything. So I was <laughs> That's why you really life. wanted to protect but Trinity too. Yeah. 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 Cause I, and, yeah. And I've seen a lot of people die really bad and I didn't, I've, yeah. Cause some people, you know, will die in cancer and they just kind of slowly, they're on morphine and nicely. And I said, yeah. and other people I've seen die. Like, <gasps> and I was like, Oh my goodness. I don't want Trin. Cause they, we were thinking about having her at home. Yeah. And I said, yeah. Eh, I want some doctors. I want some drugs. Yeah. Cause I want it to be a nice pass. And she yeah. did pass really so peacefully. peacefully. At Heritage like I literally had to Rhinus. listen. Like yeah. she, cause she would, she would stop slowly breathing then you go then you then she go, you go oh she's still breathing she you know then, yeah, yeah, yeah but so. the cool thing about it is that everything went exactly like so peacefully like i think even the people around were like i've never seen anyone like ryan my fiance he was the one she was at the place his assisted living um and when she was passing away i think it was ryan's mom that's like play her favorite song so he played goodness of god and she could notice that she was like this was it which we kind of knew because after that it was already a week she hadn't been eating and drinking and everything was just going through her mm. and so we like knew it was very soon and but then like, but she Mariah became had to call me non-verbal. to say because she's way across yeah, town almost, and i had stuff yeah. to do so i was like going you know um she said no dad well, you gotta this now. is now and i'm like, like whoa because what hour. happened how did you literally came and then an hour later she yeah, passed away. Because she was wow. like, she was, because no, she was like, she's older. hung on so long that you yeah, literally she, thought, no. oh, this is it. And then it wouldn't be this. So it was like, you yeah. kind of, but I was so thankful I didn't miss it. That mm-hmm. would have been terrible. No, so then when she passed away, like we were seeing goodness of God. And then Morgan was reading First Thessalonians where it says like, we do not weep like those who don't have a hope. Because oh, like we know. do have a hope. Mm. She will be in heaven. And so yeah. it was just such a peaceful passing. And we're really thankful that it went that way because if it was like the memories at home or like with Trinity just taking care of her because Trinity was her caregiver. Like Trinity took care of her, cleaned yeah. her wound, better did all of that better than any of the, the nurses. nurses. Said, wow, you did better than we did. And so that was a lot <laughs> on a 16, like 17 year old yeah. um, going yeah. through all that and my mom being her best friend. So it was just really cool how God was so gracious to us and like it being so peaceful, which before that I had seen a couple months before Simeon, which is Jen and Ed's mm. son, um, mm. pass away. And that was the first death I've ever seen. So it was almost like God was like preparing me mm. to see death yeah. because I saw him slowly pass away. And it was just so weird and like touching a dead body. Like, yeah, it was weird. But then it kind of helped me transition to like the first person that ever in my life I was close to was who passed away is my mom. You know yeah. what I mean? Like not even my great grandma, she was a 97. So she was ready to go. And that's all I knew. But that was just crazy and wild. But you're now supposed to answer the question. So that was a lot. But that was just for <laughs> well, those who don't. Well, let me kind of go back a little no. bit because you guys had both mentioned that, you know, the Lord radically healed Teresa and yeah. healed her of cancer. And in her obedience, she was cancer free for almost five years and so when you get the news that the cancer returned what were you guys hoping for like what did you think what was gonna was going to happen in that moment yeah um for me i honestly thought that she was going to be healed again because so my mom was like a woman of faith and prayer like every morning when i'd wake up she'd be up before us and be like praying or like reading her bible and she memorized so many scriptures about healing and she just had this faith like a childlike faith that's how i like picture my mom um she's not a woman who was like really into like i don't know like even in school she just like took when she was in high school she took care of her siblings and she always just wanted to be a mom so she had that nurturing everyone at the church who knows her called her mama Teresa because she's everyone's mom she just loves and has so much joy like in the midst of all the pain she was such an example to me because I'm more of like a negative person and my dad knows this selfish complaining in all her pain she never complained 
I can't think of one time she complained. She would always smile. She oh, would yeah. always be telling the doctors and nurses and then the caregivers at Heritage about the Lord and like, you need Jesus, basically, yeah. and asking them, what's your story? <laughs> when I was ready to lay <laughs> hands the on the doctor, she goes, uh, how are you doing today? <laughs> she said that bird, because I'm yeah. like so mad. So <laughs> she was always at church. Yeah. yeah. She and was yeah. always she was at she, church. She even was at the Christmas dinner yeah. mm-hmm. when she it was, was cold, and that's what really kind of yeah. Yeah. down. And there was a lot of that for me where I'm like, if anyone's going to be healed, it's my mom. Mm. You know what I mean? So there was and like, because you're so healthy too. Yeah. It and was I'm me. Like, like, he'll be gone in a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But she even through it was, um, just rejoicing. And so I was like, this would be such an amazing testimony. Like God, like mm. through her faithfulness and joy, like the Lord healing her. And we're still young. Like I'm newly in this relationship. Trinity's still a teenager, like 17. And, I don't know, like she hasn't seen any grandkids and that's one thing she was really waiting for and excited for. Like she would have been the best grandmom. And she, right before she passed away, she gave Ryan and I the whole rundown of like, this is how you like do it naturally. And like, this is what you do not to tear. (laughs) And Ryan was like, wow. But it was such a good passing on like her knowledge of like almost being like a midwife type of thing. And I always looked at her and I was like, I can never be like my mom. Like she had Mm. pushed all four of us kids with no epidural, less than three pushes, no tears. And I was like, I'm never going to have either. I'm never getting <laughs> pregnant or I'm never going to have a child with or no C-section. epidural. But <laughs> now I'm like, give you C-section. now yeah. seeing what she like her legacy being passed on. I'm like, honestly, I think that was the best thing for her to be with the Lord. And it reminds me of the verse in Isaiah 57 one. It says sometimes the good or uh, the good die young oft, or often before their time. But we don't realize that the Lord is sparing them from the wrath to come. Yeah. Where or it's like the evil to come. And I think that's just where I see God's love and where even though she was like so excited for these things here, I'm like, you know what? Maybe even like she would even admit, like maybe it would have been an idol or distraction, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. it would have been like, Oh, the grandkids and that. But the Lord was like, I just want you with me. Mm -hmm. Just like Enoch, how he walked with God and was no more. I just look at her as such like someone who was a woman of God who like sought the Lord on her own, um had that childlike faith and joy for the lord that like it was her time and it it makes sense now but in the moment like you're like uh god just heal her like please truly too you do (laughs) some of the worldly cliche cliches of you know only good die young Mm. so i'll probably be here till about 105 (laughs) but i mean it's like you (laughs) realize that seriously it's kind of like there's a reason people say that thing you know because she uh definitely a guy you know with me when i was i'm like I want to go home. I'm good. I mean, I, like I say, I, I'm not trying to sound spiritual. I literally, if it was me, I'd be like, I, I, I'm not eating right. I'm going to get out quick. <laughs> when, he was, when he was dying of COVID in the hospital, he's like, okay, guys, this is my farewell. Like, he was literally like, sending his here, last dude. goodbyes. And I'm like, I, have, no. I, mean, like, I realized just today, I realized it would be kind of cool. I think to have a grandkid, that would be kind of cool. I think, cause you know, I think I might spoil them a little yeah. bit, but it's like, Donald and Derek uh, yeah, they would love <laughs> grandpa. But I mean, but I'm like, I go, you know, mm-hmm. so I'd say seeing my kids, my girls happily married because my other boys are um, to see a grandkid, to see awakening. Mm-hmm. And I'm here. I can truly say I'm here for my kids and for the church. But, yeah. I, mm-hmm. you know, there's no I don't need a Ferrari. I don't need a Learjet. I don't yeah. need any of that. There's nothing in this world. I feel like I've been there, done that. I'm only 60, mm-hmm. but I feel like I've lived yeah. to be like 90. So, I'm, so I'm, when so so when you got the news, you know, that she was you're like, oh, no, like the cancer's back. Where were you in that process of grief? Were you angry? Were you bargaining with God? Were you just, you know, praying, believing, you know, like what was that process for you? Because I think a lot of times as believers, you know, I think in like the uber charismatic church, like we believe that God heals everything Mm -hmm. all the time and it is God's will to always heal you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think here at Calvary, we really do believe that, you know, God is sovereign. And if he wants to ta- yeah. to heal, he will heal. And if he doesn't want to heal you, yeah. there is a reason why, but it's all for his glory. How did you kind of go through that process, Pastor Craig, of, okay, do I believe? Do I just, like, honor God knowing that this is what's going to happen? Like, what's going to come of this? Yeah. What was that process for you? I would say first, 
do I don't remember bartering it. I think I realized selfishly because mm-hmm. you know she was ten years younger than me, so I expected I would be the one mm-hmm. checking out earlier. And uh, so I was kind of like, oh, I have a good life insurance, so I thought it'd be good for you if I left. So I just didn't even my mm-hmm. brain didn't even wrap around. Even with the cancer, I thought she's gonna be all right. She's be. And I don't know. And it wasn't denial. I just really thought she, if anyone, she already five years. I think she's mm-hmm. beat it. So it was kind of like, then it hit me like, wow, I could be alone. And, mm-hmm. and I truly can say, I don't know if I'm getting off on tangent, just slap me. You, you'll do that, right? <laughs> but it's like, I realize you don't know what you have till it's gone. Yeah. It's like, I think with ministry, you can be so busy that you yeah. can sometimes just neglect. And I truly uh, felt that, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but I felt yeah. like yeah. I didn't love her like I could have and should have. Mm-hmm. I mean, I loved her, but I didn't show it as much because I just assume she knows and I'm so busy ministering and I realized wow that I really I Mm. I Mm. don't want to sound weird but I I told everyone to please leave Mm -hmm. I stood praying to God but over her body just saying I am so sorry God please forgive me for not loving your daughter better and Mm. and not Mm. being just really cherishing her as that uh, that you know as it says in first peter three seven i believe as a as an honored vessel or cherished vessel and i went wow i'm so sorry and i and uh i just that gets me almost a little weepy but i said i'm sorry and it was so cool because i was kind of really pretty sad you know with me in the sense i wish i would have loved her let her know that more i think i did at the end but i wish when things were good. So God and God spoke to me and says, Hey, it's all right. She forgives you. And she's mm. got the best husband ever now. So mm. don't worry about it. She's like, she's so with me. So, so my thing, and, and my thing was just that it was kind of like to be, it's, it's my shame. I try to be pretty uh, candid, right? Ministry of grace mm-hmm. that I was kind of like, I'm going to be alone. And mm. with this body, I think I will be alone for already <laughs> the rest of my life. He's just like, you know, you know, he's yeah. to find something good. I was going, yeah. Oh my goodness. And I sort of selfishly, but then I went, but then it kind of God, you know, it's like, I'm kind of always start bad and then end good. I kind of like Peter have a bad start. Usually God turns me around, but I was like that. Do I really believe this? Because like you said, we believe in healing. We mm-hmm. believe God can still hear. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. But we also, like you said, we believe God's, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Right. So we don't say, I command, you know, like say, you know, yeah. like cope on, you do not receive sickness. Well, okay, Jesus said, <laughs> here's Blows my request, on COVID. but yeah. not, yeah, COVID, be, right? And it sure left, did it? COVID-19. For, for, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you got to say, okay, here's my request. Like it says yeah. in Philippians 4, 4, here's my request. I, we want healing, but. We just say, you, Father God knows best. You know, I mean, that's mm-hmm. not a scripture, but we just submit. And like Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. So you did that. And I guess the thing I really got out of it was, do I really believe mm-hmm. that to be absent from the body, to be present the Lord, then I should be happy for my wife. Then I shouldn't be a selfish pig going, hey, I need my wife. Yeah. Hey, I'm probably never get anyone even close to her. So please, God, don't do this. Yeah, I would say that was at the beginning kind of thing when I thought, wow, she might really die. But then it was like, wait a second. You know, I should care more about her yeah. than I care about myself. Mm. And I should be thankful that she is totally healed and she's with Jesus, who's the perfect bridegroom, right? As you know, there's not right. a lot of good husbands out there. And so, and I humbly admit, I could have been a lot better. Mm. Um you know, I always provided, I, I, I was always faithful to her. So it's nothing like that, but it was just, I just was busy doing the work of the ministry. And I think yeah. I just wasn't there. She, I like, I know it's hard for you to leave, right? Cause I talk a lot, but <laughs> when I would come home, especially in the early days, I would be 12 hour days, sometimes yeah. 14 and she'd want to, she'd be with the kids all day, especially when the kids were, were not in school. Mm-hmm. And she was like, honey. And I'd be like, Hey, I gave it the office, you know, I would doing, you know, I wasn't mean, but I just like, I don't really want to talk about mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. And so that's the stuff. So I, I guess a shout out to others yeah. trying to be a pastor is really don't let death be the thing that wakes you up of what I should have, could have. Cause yeah. it's like, it felt like a little taste of what hell's like for people yeah. because it's like, yeah. there's no do over. Yeah. I don't get to make that up. Right. I, I, but praise God, she's, she's good. She's good, despite yeah. me. She's so, good, but it, but it made me go, oh my goodness! Like I go, I will never get remarried until mm. I can really, really say I want my wife to feel cherished. Mm-hmm. And I think if my wife was really honest, 
she'd say, I'm kind of glad to have Jesus in my life. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like, so but, then do you feel like the... Does that make sense? I mean, no, I no, it, it, it made yeah. total sense. Yeah. And and one of the things I, I, I really like about you both is that you're both so candid on the pro- process and that you have been humble enough to express that it was after my wife's passing when it hit me that I could have loved her more. Mm. I could have loved her more with that Christ-like love. I, mm. I, I could have put more time yeah. Yeah. into my relationship or my marriage or yeah. my children, but I mm. was doing the work I felt of with the, the kids. I was, ministry. Yeah, I was real good with you. I just felt like with her, yeah. I don't know why it's just kind of like, Hey, you know, she's, you know, and she loved, she would probably, like you said, kind of idolize you guys almost. So mm-hmm. I think I was also sometimes jealous of the kids. Like you're such a good, Hey, I'm a kid too. You remember I said Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you probably say as a counselor, that's dysfunctional. But what I was saying <laughs> is that I think a husband sort of is to a wife. He is kind of like a, yeah. Dad, that really says you're beautiful. I love you. You're the best. You're the most beautiful. Those jeans make you look great, right? You say, <laughs> I mean, you know, what I'm saying, you know, go, yeah. whoa, those are. You're really short for your weight, you know. You don't say something, <laughs> like but it's like, but I just, and I think husbands really need that. The little kids that need to be told, hey, it doesn't matter, Craig. If no one respects you at church, yeah. I do. You know what I mean? I think right, we really, right. we we don't like to admit that because that's not cool to say, hey, I have needs. But even Pastor Chuck, who had a church of thirty thousand people was a multimillionaire not mm-hmm. because of ministry but because he he was this, like he flipped planes that was like you know how people flip houses he flipped mm-hmm. planes so he he said so one day his wife i got to tell you this story so cool to show how when someone like chuck can be insecure so he said people would dog him every once in a while and so his wife would get so mad like i can't believe they said that about you ah whenever someone would dog mm-hmm. him and then so one day she said i'm not going to get upset I'm not going to slam. I'm not going to get mad at these people. I'm just going to give it to God. And that's it. And so Chuck goes, did you hear today? So-and-so said this about me. And she goes, hmm. And he goes, did you hear what I said? She goes, yeah. And I'm just going to give it to the Lord. I'm not going to. He goes, no, I want you to get upset. And it's funny. I mean, I hear Chuck. I mean, here's this guy who's been in ministry for 50 yeah. years. He's like, say, I need you to say this is not right. And so I yeah. think, you know, when you hear someone like Chuck, admit, or his wife was admitting it for him. But it's like, you realize we really are a lot more, I don't know if the word dysfunctional, but we are a lot more needy than we want to admit. Yeah, yeah. And I think of myself as a very independent person, right? I mean, I was kind of raised on my own, but I'm realizing if I'm honest, I am a lot more needy than I admit, yeah. and, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm a, I, I, and I, I just really realized that I think that is part of a healthy marriage. And I mm-hmm. think my wife, she didn't have a real good uh, okay. family and mm-hmm. and she didn't have a real good father she didn't wasn't around her father a lot mm-hmm. kind of weird stuff so i think i really could have shown her uh, the father heart of god more you yeah. know what i mean i showed i think to you right i think i was real good right okay but i showed it yeah. to mariah and to the other kids because i really want but somehow my wife i don't know why i just really i just said oh she's she's she's, she's good she was raising christian home even though it yeah. wasn't really good yeah. so anyways well, so i don't know what that so what all that question. means but so okay. here's something and here's kind of like a hard question and Uh-oh. i you know like let's I see how this one goes but you know so your dad was explaining how he made the ministry more of the priority and then once your mom passed away you know i was just like okay like i could have loved her 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 more Mm-hmm. One of the things that I learned to love about your process, Mariah, is, and not just because of what I know, but mm-hmm. one of the things that we talked about was that you, kind of like your dad, you knew that you should have spent more time mm-hmm. yep. with your mom when she was alive. Yeah. But you were more of the avoidant mm-hmm. type. So yeah. kind of explain that process because you and Trinity are mm-hmm. very opposite. Yes. And that Trinity was like, mom 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 Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna serve her i'm gonna take care of her Mm -hmm. i'm gonna care for her and you were like okay so i'm going to work yeah and i need my and and i need my routine so kind of explain what that was Mm. like for you yeah i'm actually very thankful you said that because that's probably been the biggest part of my grieving process um so for me growing up i feel like i was a lot like my mom like similar in ways I have both qualities as a middle child of my dad and my mom, but I think naturally I tend to be more like my mom, like yeah. naturally shy. So good but then your mom, pushing bad myself. No, <laughs> but I think that for her, she struggled with fearing man, like mm-hmm. fearing wanting everyone to like her, like every like be the pastor's wife, you know that mm-hmm. everyone Perfect, yeah. loves and accepts. And 
I know that that was sometimes a hard point for my parents. And growing up as a kid, like, it, Expl- it's... Explain, you got to explain that a little. Yeah, I think growing up I as hate, a kid... I hate putting on the show. Yeah, so... I, uh, I don't okay. like how he's... I like to say, hey, I'm discouraged. I'm yeah. frustrated. Yeah. He was yeah. how you doing, Pastor? Great. Praise the Lord. I, I say, so sometimes I'd get mad and, oh, I'd be, honey. Don't you know, say I, that. Or, I don't yeah, care. so that's I where for. You know I mean, I want to be real. So, yes, yes. because she'd always want to be smiling, even if things were bad, yeah. it would make me almost go extreme, like, like almost yeah. want to swear. Yeah. Like, and almost I think go, that's how. I'm mad. You know, because I was so tired of the, like, is that the assembly thing kind of wanting to make everything look good? And I'm like, yeah. Things are not good. Why are we putting on yeah. a facade? Just stop yeah. and be real. And you for know, it so to make more I mean? That's sense the frustration. of, which I know that this is something actually that I think I've told a lot of people and it's blessed them with my parents' story, um, is that my parents are really honest to us kids about how they started their marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really something that needs to be said because I think it's something that was hard for my mom because like growing mm-hmm. up, she never she's like I never kissed a boy I never like did this like uh, she was good in those ways and my dad was her first boyfriend and for them when they were dating and stuff they would like they would have their own boundaries and they would you know be car to car and like be really careful and then my dad humbly admits that he then got depressed and sad Mm -hmm. you know with loss of his mom like those memories coming back or things. I mean, it's this just is, when I yeah. could say it's life. And yeah. so they, he was drinking and then he's like, then it was the car to then the apartment to then I slept with your mom. And mm. he heard the Lord say like, he broke up with her. Cause he's like, I can't do this. And then yeah. he repented. And it, was one and time. Humbled it, it wasn't like, we were yeah, they weren't just like yeah. kept doing it and living together. Um, and then long story short, it was a long story, but he basically, um, then, felt from the Lord, like, if you sleep with her again, she's going to get pregnant. And so then somehow my mom, like, still wanted him. And so they got back together. But well, then another, I know, <laughs> they got, <laughs> they got back together. Uh, she's like, the tempter then, came through, Craig. <laughs> and, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to rush and interrupt. I just know we're way past the time, but, time, but <laughs> I'm just going to be more calm. Okay. So sorry, I've yeah. been interrupting you. Because yeah. I need to. No, it's all right. Go for it. But um, I, I think, so when they came back together, there was alcohol yeah, we involved again. And, and then I, cause I was quick. Cause I was going, remember I told you depressed. Sunday I was doing yeah. the say us life where I was raising the money radio show. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. hated raising money. Right. It doesn't yeah. everyone love it. Yeah. And so it was just, and yet all my board members are multimillionaires, mm. you know? So I'm like, why this, it was $150,000. My budget. Cause most people, you do a nonprofit. It's 90% of it's the people's salary. Yeah. I was making 15,000 a year. So you understand? So out of 150, that's not much. Yeah. So I'm like, why didn't you, you guys, you, you guys are worth millions. I mean, we're talking the, the poorest guy was worth five million, and one more guy was worth eight. So I was so frustrated. So when I told you La Paloma, I was angry, yeah, and I was just yeah. like, and so th- then I eventually just said I'm done, and I was mad because the ministry was great. The ministry was awesome. Everyone was saying it's the mm-hmm. best ministry ever, but it's just amazing because we do free concerts. I didn't want non Christian yeah. to pay, and you know, because they always say they want your money. So that's where yeah, the depression can... came to where the, and there's where I say like I needed a mom kind of, you know, and yeah. she was re- at that time, but I was just, but then, like I said, drinking, that's why no but drinking it, does yeah. nothing good for me. Yeah. And so then and being alone and not so, having accountability. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't like going, I wasn't, and I wasn't going, going to church. I was going to Casas, but I was mm-hmm. doing the, Check. I was doing punch the time card. I was coming yeah, in yeah. late, leaving. I wasn't really going there. So during that yeah. time, you weren't with Teresa. You were like figuring it out. Then yeah, they Well, no, up. yeah, because I, I, and I knew, you know, they my failed. old saying, my grandpa said, once you go to the trough, it's hard not it's to hard go back. Not. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not yeah. saying my wife's a pig or anything, but I'm just saying, so I knew <laughs> that it would be very hard to do You're that. You're the pig. Right? She's and I, the yeah, there you go. I'm the pig. <laughs> but it's like, I couldn't. And I didn't really have accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always yeah. laugh when people say, man, accountability. Yeah, I would have dreamed to have accountability like I'm willing to do. Yeah. With people. Yeah. And no one was no one was around me. You know, mm-hmm. I told people that were kind of my mentors, but like, well, just be careful. Well, that doesn't really help you. And so, um, so, then, then, so then that's when you were with her again. And then I, well, I finally then, quit the ministry and that really depressed me. I was drinking. We fell again. And then, and then and she then, found out, and then you and broke then, up with her again. And then she <laughs> found out she was pregnant. Yeah. And then my dad realized, okay, two wrongs don't make a right. I'm not going to just marry you. I'll support the child, but yeah. I'm not going to just marry you because I have to. And then correct me if I'm wrong. You heard the Lord speak to you yeah. like 
First, well, why would gonna, you do? I, I, want to, I want to hear you on this. I'm going to really freak you out here. You got to hear a psychologist, <laughs> or no, I'm sorry, counselor. Mm -hmm. But is, so I was so dysfunctional, and not like a past tense, I mean, but I was more dysfunctional than I am now. I was like, I was so terrified of marriage because I've seen mm -hmm. such brutal marriages. And in a lot of, we're a Catholic family, so the marriage was over even while they were together for mm -hmm. years, you know, it's like yeah. just mm -hmm. for the kids, you know what I'm saying? So just, I go, I do not want that. And then the alcohol, the violence, I was so afraid of being violent because I had that happen to me. Mm -hmm. So I was just terrified. So um, I was just terrified. So I feel like, now hear this, there's God's perfect will, there's God's sovereign will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like God, because right. I was so afraid, he almost had to allow her to get pregnant to kind of get me to shake mm -hmm. to reality. He because didn't allow it was you like, to sin, it wasn't, it wasn't like he, that was his perfect will, but right. it was like, that was his way of kind of saying, hey, you're never going to get married because you're so afraid. It's like this. Yeah. And all of a sudden I go, God, I don't want to just marry her because I got her pregnant. I don't know if yeah. that's going to make it right. And the Lord says, no, this is who I have for you. Yeah. You marry her. Now, mm. that's not real sexy for your wife, so there's a bad yeah. foundation for there's you. No, oh, there's no and so she, and even though I said, and honey, I'm not marry you because I have to. Yeah. I told you I was going to put her up in an apartment. I was going to be, I mean, I really, because I, and that's going to sound terrible to people, but I literally went, I'll, I'll fund, but I just don't know if I'm supposed to marry you. And uh, you say, well, then why did you have sex with her? Well, because I'm a pig. But, um, but I went, but I then God spoke to me and then I was like, and you know, as a guy, we're mm -hmm. so weird because we can just go, Oh, it's right. It's God. And now it's good. Where the wife's like, you know, my mm -hmm. wife is going, you kind of had to marry me. So she yeah. didn't. And I, it took me, I don't think it ever really got over. It. And that's, that's where I cry mm -hmm. because I realized my, my wife was like a princess. Yeah. She went to, she was miss Monticello. Monticello and all this. And so she just had tiaras. And so, mm -hmm. and I just gave her just a quick little wedding and she just kind of wanted just, to wear the white dress. Yeah. She had a wedding and dress. I just, and I just got a few friends. And said, head and We're good. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> If there's, if you ever want to know what never to do in a marriage, just watch and listen to my. That would have to be for another oh podcast, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, but I find that really interesting. Yeah. How like a lot of that played again. I think all of that beginning of the relationship yeah. of the back and the forth, and then it finally came to her passing, and you were like, it finally clicked. Well, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you so much to everyone who donates. This is listener supported. So if you would like to donate, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. And, and if also, you like to donate to my counseling. Yeah, program. our counseling session. <laughs> our counseling uh, if, <laughs> if you would like uh, Ashley, so Ashley to answer any of your guys' questions, you guys can, like she said, drop a comment in the in the comment section below or you can also email us by checking out our website uh, calvaryconversations.com thanks so much guys and god bless